Welcome to the Contact Center Cactus Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Malvin, coming to you from sunny Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm your co-host, Jake Ayan, from Dumaguete City, Philippines. I'm a serial entrepreneur, started my first business 10 years ago, and six LLCs later, I started PacBiz Contact Center Outsourcing in 2015. Today, we have over 200 employees growing. And I'm the operations manager here in PacBiz, and I've been working with Eric since 2014, and uh, I grew as the company grew. So whether you're looking to outsource for the first time, whether you manage a contact center, or you're just looking to improve your customer experience, we'll be covering topics for you. So business managers, operations managers, business owners, this is for you, so make sure to subscribe. All right. Welcome to episode seven. Thank you guys for joining us here today. And uh, I'm joined by my co-host all the way across the, the ocean in the Philippines. So yeah, yeah. This is Jake. I am. Yeah, and I'm Eric Malvin, coming from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, and today we're going to be talking all about outsourcing. And uh, we're going to talk about the diff- difference between onshore versus offshore, working with an outsourcing company versus freelance. How to outsource successfully? That's a really important topic. Uh, what's the difference between dedicated yeah. staffing or paying per call and strategic outsourcing and why you should pay more attention to how you're planning out your outsourcing. And so uh, that's a lot of content to pack in. It's not going to all fit into one episode. And so we're going to split this up part one today. And episode eight is going to be right. part two. Uh, and so to kick things off all right. uh, with my co-host, Jake. <laughs> all right. Let's start with the question. So what are the different kind of ways to... Uh you know, to outsource. Yeah. So if you're outsourcing, you've got some options to consider here. Now there's onshore, nearshore, and offshore. Now what's the difference between those? Uh, onshore yeah. is you have uh, people you're outsourcing to in your own country. And so you might find a, a business mm-hmm. in your own city, maybe somewhere else uh, in your country, but you're, you're working with someone that's born and uh, has their business in, in their own, in the country that you're from. And so some of the cultural differences, maybe language barriers, uh, you won't necessarily have that, but the cost savings will not be there. In fact, it might cost more than what you're currently paying uh, for onshore. And then nearshore is uh, you're looking outside of your country, but still close by. So if you're in the U.S. and you outsource to Mexico, that'd be nearshore. Uh, So it's close by. You could easily travel to it. Uh, unlike uh, offshore, which is typically a bit further away, but then you also get to take advantage of uh, lower rates. And so Philippines is a great example where PACBIS is based. Uh, India, uh, even countries yeah. like Albania, Ukraine, uh, actually all Pakistan. over the world, people are uh, offering outsourcing for, from their country. And so uh, offshore is available all over. Uh, so thanks for the question, Jake. Now I got a question for you. You can outsource with a company or you could work directly with an individual. Uh, so you help manage mm-hmm. the office at PacBiz. Um, and let's see, working with, um, no, we, we're one option, right? We're work, you, you could work with one company like us, but what are the advantages with working with a company like PacBiz versus hiring uh, freelance through uh, some of the different freelance um. websites? Yeah, uh, actually, there's there's a lot of differences. Like um, when talking about uh, hiring direct, directly to a person um, versus um, you know outsourcing to a company, uh, you know, uh, I think that th- that involves the uh, reliability and uh, the accountability. And of course, if uh, if you are working directly with a person, and uh, you know, just it's you know who who would you know who who's who is uh, accountable uh, for any mistakes and uh, if if uh, there are mistakes that are done um, you know that you're done with that person and then, you know you you'll be looking for someone else uh, unlike if you're you know outsourcing with a with a company uh, just like what we do we we provide talents like. You know, we always do backup people. Uh, we do have backup people for uh, certain uh, tasks or you know uh, jobs or positions. Um, when you know, uh, have, if you're going to get a call taker from us, uh, 
or from from a company for sure uh, there will be a backup person like if that person is not available uh, who would cover for the shift if you're just uh, you know d working directly with an individual so that's the difference and um, for you know there there's so many things like uh, you're risking uh, you know a data privacy because you know how you know we understand that uh, some information are really uh, uh, are not meant to be seen by other people but you know, if uh, if you're working directly with a person who's, you know, who's checking this for, you know, for these people. And uh, unlike uh, in a company, uh, someone has uh, to be uh, uh, accountable for that. And uh, we make sure that, uh, you know, if we we promise that this is uh, going, this is going to be the performance that we're going to deliver. And, um, you know, the, the company is accountable for uh, for the result. So that's, uh, that's how uh, different uh, these two are. Yeah, you know, and um, I want to throw in something there to add too. I've been talking with a lot of businesses lately at, that have outsourced. They're outsourcing currently, and they're not happy with the results. And the key word I keep hearing is reliability. And you mentioned the backup person that we provide, and uh, it's to mm -hmm. make sure that there's if there's a shift assigned that we're covering it. And you know, some of the ways that I've seen us make sure that there's reliability. If that person is sick or, or out, you know, there's a supervisor that's making sure the backup's in. And if for some reason, maybe the backup is not available, then we're notifying the client. So they're aware uh, many times in advance that we are not able to cover the shift compared to figuring mm -hmm. out 30 minutes in, you're still trying to contact the rep, what's going on. And there could be a number of reasons why they're not available. Maybe there's a power outage, an internet outage. Uh, and those are again, things that when you're working with a company, we have, we provide. Yeah. Like what, like yeah. to, to talk about that for a bit, like what are the things that we, we help do to back up these agents, even if they're working from home? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we do have the uh, power pack. So uh, though we are using, uh, we're using laptops uh, for them to, uh, you know, as you know, part of the, uh, their workstations at home. They have the laptops, and um, so we all know that laptops uh, they they have their own batteries. But you know, for longer uh, outage of uh, power outage outages, uh, we have this power pack that would support the uh, power, and uh, along with that, uh, we have the internet uh, uh, back backups. So, and yeah, that, that's. The, that's one that those are the things that we provide to uh, to the call takers and uh, and uh, the most important is we also have backup people so aside from that uh, aside from those things that we uh, we sent to uh, to the agents we have people also uh, uh, or you know working as backup uh, in different locations and we also have people in the office uh, so, since we're doing hybrid office yeah Thanks, thanks for sharing because uh, your perspective out there, since you're the one overseeing things in the Philippines. Uh, so yeah. now you, you've been an account manager for years and uh, you work closely with clients as they get started. Uh, and so, mm -hmm. you know, one of the other things that people need to look out for is uh, that we see the differences when we're working with companies is those who have outsourced before and uh, maybe those who haven't. So. Kind of t break that down a little bit. Like, what do you what do you typically see uh, from your perspective when businesses are first starting? Because you know, mm -hmm. like, I'm sure you're thinking sometimes like, oh, this company could be more prepared because uh, you don't know what you don't know. Like, you're getting these companies are going into this kind of figuring it out as they go. Uh, and so, you know, what are you seeing when businesses first start? Yeah. So uh, some, you know, we have been. You know, uh, working with companies who who de who doesn't have any experience with uh, with outsourcing, so uh, they tend to ask uh, what what are, what we do and how we do with the training. Uh, however, there are other companies who who has done this and uh, and uh, you know develop some uh, systems uh, how to make it more uh, effective. So yeah, the, it's. You know, it's kind of easier to work with someone who you know who has done this before with other companies and uh, who just transferred to um, you know to us, and 
you know, I think they're prepared and, uh, you know, they have, they have this, uh, you know, like we ask questions, um, uh, for, you know, for companies who doesn't, you know, they, they mostly ask questions, but these questions have already been answered by, uh, those companies who has done this before. So, you know, even the smallest detail as the, you know, they want to keep an agent, uh, to be specific with the morning shifts just to work with the morning shift. And, um, you know, I kind of asking why, why, why are they doing this? And why are they not transferring? Uh, why do you want, they don't allow uh, these agents to be transferred to different hours. And, uh, their answer is they, they know these people who are calling, they know who calls in the morning, they know where they're calling from. And that makes the, the, the call takers job easier. Like hearing the voice and seeing the name who appears on the, uh, on, you know, on the dispatch system. You would already know where this guy is calling from, and you know that's uh, you know being accurate because y y you know these people. Like uh, so, those are the things that uh, you know the the uh, the experienced uh, outsourcers are you know ha that they have that uh, the the first timers don't. So, uh, like uh, for the first timers, we, we of course we we have supports for them, and uh, most of the time uh, the support that we do uh, work. And uh, so this, there was one time I remember that uh, we have this uh, client that uh, didn't have uh, any 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 idea, and uh, we just you know um, you know we 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 learned the things that uh, they they want us to uh, to have, and uh, at the same time. Uh, we're giving them an idea and uh, what what to expect and on the uh, you know in the days to come, and you know also also the same as you know the expectations uh, that would come along uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, the onboarding call. You would know uh, what to expect and all these things. So for the people who who are not experienced, uh, I mean who, is, who does not, who doesn't have experience with outsourcing, um, you know you you will be guided. So but. Uh, there is the advantage of it, uh, you know, uh, working with us since uh, we have uh, experience working with those, uh, with both uh, the experienced one and uh, non-experienced uh, companies who tried to uh, work with PackBase. So uh, I think it's just that, uh, you know, uh, getting get the experience, like we can help uh, the non-experienced ones because of the, uh, uh, the experience that we have for the experienced uh, companies uh, with us outsourcing, and um, yeah, well, with that, uh, I have an, a question f uh, for you, Eric. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I think we are kind of at our time for this episode, so let's just take a, a quick time out here and uh, end it for episode seven. So, thank you guys for listening. I hope you've been yeah. learning, and I hope you're really interested to hear what we've got to say uh, next episode eight. We're going to keep the conversation going, and I'm going to let Jake ask his question in the next episode here. So thank you guys for listening, right. and uh, we'll catch you next week. Bye.